Okay, welcome back. In the last few videos, we've been talking about direction angles and direction cosines. And now that we understand them a little bit better, I wanna take that information and I wanna really dive into understanding 3D force vectors and specifically their components. So let's say I have this, well, I've drawn this uh, 3D coordinate system here. And starting at the origin, I've drawn this force that's uh, pointing out to somewhere in, in this three-dimensional space. Now, this force vector looks like it's just in the x, uh, y plane, but I assure you it's not. It's in three dimensions. There's also a z component. So if we broke this force up into its components, well, just like we've been doing for 2D forces, we know that 2D forces have two components, one along the x and one along the z. Well, similarly, uh, 3D force vectors have three uh, components, one along the x, y, and z axis. So if I were to break this force F up into its components, we could see that F of x might look something like this, where it's along the x axis. So this is F of x. And then we have, let's say, a y component that goes somewhere over here. This is F of y. And then finally, we have this uh, z component right here, and this is f of z. Now, we know that this force vector f is really the summation of its components, and its components are f of x plus f of y plus f of z. And we also know that we could break these, or we can represent each of these three force components in terms of its value times some unit vector that represents the axis in which this force vector is oriented in. So f of x is really the scalar quantity f of x times the unit vector i. f of y is f of y times the unit vector j. And then f of z times uh, the unit vector k. Now, in order to find the magnitude of this force right here, what we can do is we can take the root sum square of those three components. So we could say that the magnitude of f is really equal to f of x squared plus f of y squared plus f of z squared. And then we take the square root of that entire value. Now, we know that this works, but the big question is why? Why does this equation work and where the heck does it come from when we're just looking at this single force in three, uh, 3D space? So in this video, this is the question I want to answer. And I also want to answer how we can figure out the values f of x, f of y, and f of z. So if we needed to calculate the values for those three components, how do we do that? What is f of x? What is f of y? And what is f of z? So in order to answer these two questions, where does this formula come from and how do we calculate the values for f of x, y, and z, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna first uh, erase all of this and I'm going to draw the plane in which this f, force vector f is acting in. And this plane is gonna be, well, two dimensions. And hopefully this will sort of help you visualize where this force is acting in. So if I were to draw the plane in which this force vector F was acting in, this plane would look something like this, where you have this, this, and it goes up to the Y axis right here, and that's parallel to the bottom line. And then you have the last line right here. You can see that this force vector F is acting within this two dimensional plane. And all of these angles or these corners are 90 degree angles. So hopefully that uh, sort of gives you a better indication of where this force vector is acting. So you can sort of see that this plane right here is sort of oriented some angle from X uh, to the plane. Now we've been talking about direction angles. And so within this plane, we know that this angle right here is theta y. And remember, as a quick review, we have theta x, theta y, and theta z. And these are special angles. They're not just regular theta values. They are special angles that are from the positive 
axes in which they're representing to the positive uh, line of action for the force. So the positive uh, direction of this force is this way. The positive y-axis is this way. So theta y is going to be from that positive axis to that force. So that's theta y. And similarly, theta x would be this angle right here. And then theta z would be this angle right here. Now, you can sort of see that this plane right here, again, is acting at some angle from the x-axis. Now, I'm going to call that angle, for now, I'm just going to call it phi. And so just like two-dimensional uh, forces and breaking them up into its two components, what we can do is we can break F into its two components within this plane. Now, we already know one of the, those components, and that is F of Y. And so the vertical component for F is going to be F of Y, just like that. So I can draw that in, in, I'll just do purple, it might be a little hard to see, but that right there is f of y. Now, this component right here for this force, it's not f of x, nor is it f of z, it's just some force component that's acting within the xz plane, so this plane right here, but it is one of the components for f within this plane. So. I'm just going to draw that component out. Uh, it's going to look something like that. And I will just call it F of H. And H is nothing special. It's just a letter that I use to represent this force component right here. So because I've drawn these two force components in, I could say that this force vector F that we're looking at is really comprised of two components, F of Y plus F of H. Now, what are the values for f of y and f of h? So the scalar value of f of y is just going to be just like how we've been doing it in two-dimensional space. It's going to be the value of f times cosine of theta y. And in this case, we are using a direction cosine here to figure out what f of y is. Now, again, if you don't understand uh, direction angles and direction cosines, uh, please watch the last couple of videos. That explains all of this. Now, for the value of f of h, we can still use this theta y value here. And remember, when we add vector components together, we can do so in a tail-to-tip fashion. So if we took this f of h vector and we just moved it up here, we could use this theta y within this plane right here. And that's a right triangle, right? Here's the right angle. This whole thing is a right triangle. And we could say that f of h is really equal to f times sine of that theta y value. So up until this point, we've already answered part of our question. We now know what f of y is, right? We calculated that here. We can take the direction angle theta y and we can take the cosine of it. So there's our direction cosine, multiply it by the value of f and we get the value of f of y. And again, we did something similar for f of h, but now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look at this f of h vector right here and I'm going to break it up into its two components along the x-axis and the z-axis. So if I drew those two components out in the diagram in purple, we can sort of see that f of x, uh, and I'll just call it f of x, uh, is going to act something like that. And then you have a z component right here, which acts uh, something like that. So that's f of z. And these two components, f of x and f of z, in this case are the two components of f of h. And indirectly, they are the two components of f along with f of y. And so now let's try to figure out the values for f of x and f of z. Well, f of x is going to be f of h times cosine of phi. And the, the way that I got that was if f of h is this force component right here, we can see that f of x plus f of z make a right triangle within the xz plane. And so the right angle is this angle right here. And so that's just very simple trigonometry. We can take the hypotenuse, which in this case is 
f of h, and that's this value right here, and multiply it by cosine phi to get this f of x value. Okay, awesome, and we can do something similar to f of z, and f of z is going to be f of h times, in this case, sine of phi. Now what's interesting is that both of these terms have f of h in them. And in the previous step, we calculated what f of h was. And so now what I can do is I can take f of h and I can plug it into here and I can plug it into here and we'll get the values of f of x and f of z uh, in terms of phi and theta y. So if I plugged in f of h here for f of x, f of h was, well, that's f times sine of theta y and then times cosine of phi. And then same thing for f of z, f of h was f times sine of theta y times, in this case, sine of phi. And that solves half the problem. So now we know the values of f of x, f of y, and f of z. So if you ever needed to calculate what those values are, now you know how to do them. And again, the sort of summary or the steps is to really take this force vector f and break it up into its two components, f of y and f of h, and then break up this f of h into its two components, f of x and f of z. And we already know the angles, theta y, phi, uh, those would more, more than likely be given, and you could figure out f of x, f of y, and f of z. So that solves this right here, but again, where does this come from? Where does this equation come from? Well, if we look back at this diagram, and I said, I'm going to label the vertices of this box that I've drawn. So the endpoints here, there's four of them, right? It's a rectangle. And I said this was point A, this was point B, this was C, and let's just call that D. You can see that these points uh, can make up a triangle within that plane. So you have triangle A, B, D right here, and that's a right triangle. And then you also have triangle D, B, C, and that is a right triangle. So I can take any one of those two triangles and derive this formula. So for our example, we'll just take triangle A, B, D, and the right angle is right there. And I can say that, well, we can use Pythagorean theorem uh, to sort of figure out what this hypotenuse F is. And so in this case, we have this f of y here, and then we have this f of h here. And so we know, or I can say that f squared is going to be equal to f y squared plus f h squared. So this equation right here is sort of starting to look like that. However, we have this f of h value here, and we don't like that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look at f of h and see that it has two components, f of x and f of z. And if we added those in a tilde tip fashion, we would have f of x right here. We would have f of z right there. And then you have the hypotenuse here. And this angle right here is a 90 degree angle. That's a right angle. So in this case, what I can say is that f of h squared is equal to f of x squared plus f of z squared. And this is cool because now I can take f of h squared and I can plug it into this term right here. And just like magic, we'll get, um, I can write that maybe here, I can say f of squared is equal to f of y squared plus f of h squared, which is this term right here, plus f of x squared plus f of z squared. And there you go. If I just rearrange the terms, I could say that you know f of squared is equal to f of x squared plus f of y squared plus f of z squared. And now if I take the square root of both sides, I get, well, the magnitude for f. So f is equal to f of x squared plus f of y squared plus f of z squared, all square root. And that is how we get this formula right here. So the magnitude of f, which is this value right here, is just the root sum square of those three components. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this derivation. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding of 3D uh, forces, and hopefully now they're a little bit easier to see and deal with.